Okay, this is an attempt to fix my MPC's record gain knob on my own. I've already taken apart, so this is loose because I've unsoldered this, but basically my record gain gives me static when I try to record, so I can't get anything without static. So I'm gonna first show you how to take apart the MPC. First thing you're gonna wanna do is take off all the knobs, again, which I've already done, so. Um, just pop these off. They pull right off, but don't pull too hard because the stuff's just barely soldered to the board. Just give it a little twist. Right here on these two sliders, there's two little plastic pieces which keep the knob from scraping against this. You want to make sure you don't lose those, so take those off too. Um, and then the first thing you're going to want to unscrew up front here is the uh, this front plate, and I've already unscrewed everything. So that's going to these screws underneath here. If you can remember, don't unscrew this because it's just unnecessary to have that extra little piece off. These things, once you've unscrewed that front part, uh, these plastic side panels, you uh, unscrew these. These each have two screws on it, and then you slide them forward and they pull right off. I almost broke these because I was trying to yank them off. So make sure you just slide them forward. Then you're going to go one around the sides in the back of this and this just lean it forward and it pulls right off. Okay. This uh, comes off. This is, this is loose. It's not screwed on or anything. So you want to make sure you don't um, slide this around. If you do or if you get dust on your hair, use dust off to spray anything away because you don't want to mess up the contact with these pads. Um, so this is the problem here. It's this uh, rotary encoder. This one's all bent to hell because it's one already yanked off the board. But let me show you how to get the board up. There's uh, wires connected here. I had to struggle to pull them off, so be careful because I think they can break. I broke a part of something down here getting this one ribbon off. Um, I broke one of the plastic latches that holds it on there, so I'm going to use some electrical tape later to make sure that holds in there well. Uh, once you get all that stuff, there's one more right here. I left these attached and just kind of lifted the board up at an angle, and then I... Uh, took my soldering iron and heated up the back of um, the rotary encoder here. And then uh, once I got everything loose enough, I just kind of like yanked it out. This got all bent to hell when I pulled it out, so uh, no using that again. Uh, but again, like this, I, I don't know what's going on in here. I guess this wasn't touching this stuff enough and it was causing some static. So I went to um, mpcstuff.com and ordered some new uh, rotary encoders. I got two just in case I screwed up. These are what new ones look like. So now I'm gonna heat up my soldering iron and attempt to solder one of these new ones back on here and we'll see how that goes. Okay, now I've completely pulled the board from the MPC. I was just gonna leave it on but uh, it was hard to get around the back. So now, right here, because um, there's two uh, of these knobs, the uh, rotary encoders right next to each other. When you flip it over, this is the, uh, the one for the volume, and this is one for recording. So I've, I've got it pushed up in there, and it kind of uh, holds itself up in there. The little prongs that it has on it holds up in these two little holes here. And down here is, uh, I think, where most of the information uh, passes along to the board. So um, the solder that I'm using is uh, for PC work. Uh, I don't know really that much about soldering. I've only done it a few times, so I'm just assuming this is good for any kind of like circuitry and stuff like that. Uh, but I've got my uh, soldering iron set to 100 degrees, which it's pretty hot. Again, this could be the biggest fail video ever because I don't know that much about soldering, so here we go. Also, make sure 
you cover your face with something because that stuff can smell pretty nasty. And I've also got a uh, wick which uh, sops up the extra resin or the extra solder. And if you get really close here, you can see that these pins are really close to each other. I don't know if this magnifying glass helps. Probably not. These pins are really close to each other. And if you see on the other one, the solder for each one of those pins doesn't touch. So I'm assuming that would probably screw something up. So my method is like a kind of dental floss. I'm going to hold a piece of this wick in between each one like they were teeth while I solder and let the solder dry so that it doesn't drain over into the next piece. But let me start with the easy part and solder the, uh, the big uh, clips that are holding this thing in place, which are probably giving the electricity to it. So this should be easy enough, hopefully. Here we go. Just touch a little solder on there. And go up top and that should be enough. The other side. And again, I don't think it needs a ton. And I'm gonna use this little wick method here. Solder close, this might be more difficult than I originally thought, but okay, it's a little bit there. Yeah, this is proving to be kind of tricky. Good thing about having that wick right there too, it just will soak up a lot of the solder. And solder your wick to the board. Let's try for the second one here. Hope I'm getting enough on there. I don't know how much that's helped me. So I'm just gonna hold the solder you know, iron to the individual pegs and touch them with the, the solder itself. That seems to be working a lot better. And that's probably what they did because it's what it looks like on the other side. Okay, um, just if you go really close right here, I don't know how much you can see on here. Um, these big kind of like clip things that hold it to the board have a big uh, healthy amount of solder on them, just like on the other side, although theirs is way cleaner looking. Um, and of course, I try to keep these little droplets on each of these hangers here uh, on their own little uh, circuit path there uh, like they did for the other rotary encoder. So the best way to check your work is just to look at the other rotary encoder next to it and see if you can get as close to that as possible. Mine looks mad sloppy but um, best that I could do and I didn't have to send my MPC anywhere so now let's see if it works and I actually don't have to end up sending it somewhere.